Reading research papers quickly and effectively is so important during a PhD and research in general. You spend so much time trawling through papers, finding the right ones, extracting the information, and then trying to organize it all together can be an absolute nightmare. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the tools that you can use to actually make paper reading and uh, sort of uh, understanding much quicker and more effective uh, just beyond you know just reading the uh, sections in a certain order. Um, and there are two reasons in my research why I kind of read research papers. The first one is the typical research path where I wanted to know what was new in the world, what I needed to know, what was related to my research, um, methods and skills that I wanted to bring into my own research. And there's no getting beyond the fact that you do have to then read some very sort of like dense papers in their entirety to really understand how you can incorporate their research into yours and find those gaps. Um, and there's also another reason, a less kind of uh, in-depth reason why I read papers is because I just needed a citation, right? This is just some of the things I said in my introduction in other papers or my literature review. My supervisor would simply say, needs a reference. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I go in, I type in keywords, I try to find a paper that I can reference in my um, my introduction or my paper, whatever I'm doing. And uh, that is very sort of uh, quick because you you only have to look at like one or two sections of the paper. And I'll be talking about that in, that in this video as well. You know, if you just need a citation to back up what you're saying or support an assertion that you're making, uh, it can be very easy. And we'll talk about the tools that you can use to find those quick and easy kind of contextual uh, references uh, in this video. All right, let's get into it. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. Link is in the description as always. And there, when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the perfect daily schedule to tools that I use during my research, um, as well as how to write the perfect abstract and more. So go sign up and you'll get that straight into your inbox. I'll see you there. Okay, one thing I don't see enough channels talk about on YouTube is when you are reading research papers effectively, you actually need to find the appropriate research papers quickly and be able to kind of separate them out from all of the rubbish, all of the stuff that's on the side that isn't directly related. And it can get really sort of like confusing, especially when keywords um, start kind of you know overlapping. Some areas may use keywords that are similar to yours and it can get a little bit muddy. So really it's about finding the uh, the the rose amongst the thorns, is that how you say it? But it's about finding the most important and impactful papers in your field and then branching out from there. Um, there are three tools that I've seen and I recommend. Um, it comes down to connected papers, Research Rabbit and Lit Maps. Those three tools allow you to kind of use a seed paper and go out and explore the literature. Um, and it's much kind of easier than going to Google Scholar and relying on search terms and ands and quotation marks. And you know, if you don't know how to search properly on Google, go check out those modifiers, those search modifiers, and uh, they'll make your life a whole lot easier. So. Absolutely, it relies on key words. And when you're writing your paper, not enough uh, effort goes into really selecting the right key words. And I talk about that in my ebook um, and how to select the right key words, where to find them, how to make sure people actually find your paper when they're searching for your research. Oh, what was that? Um, and so, yes. Keywords allow you to find papers and then using tools like the uh, three that I mentioned, you can also kind of branch out. And there's typically one or two very influential uh, reviews or papers in your field that you can use to kind of branch out. So that is uh, how I would start. Make sure that you can identify the most impactful papers and branch off from there. Once you have found your papers of interest. You need to make sure that uh, you read them effectively. So this is only the first step. Once you've got this kind of stack of papers, a digital stack if it's on a file on your computer, you need an easy way to kind of sort through them. And I like to start with the review papers. The review papers are um, really cheap ways of getting loads of citations. Um, if you sort of turn your introduction of your thesis or the, you know, the, the 
literature review into, into a uh, review paper, it's a really easy way of collecting loads of citations early on in your PhD. So consider doing that if you haven't already. But uh, once you've got all of these research papers, start with a re like a review paper. A review paper is one that looks at all of the research in a field and kind of combines it into kind of a meta um, study. And uh, that is a really great place to start. And then from there, you can start identifying, oh, well, this one's important and you can go read it. Now, when you pick up a paper, the first thing you do is scan it. Scan the shit out of it. Like, don't even worry about, you know, following sentences. One thing I do is I just pick it up and I go title, abstract, and just leave it at that initially. If the abstract interests me, I'll scan the figures and the tables and I'll kind of look at the captions. A really great paper and figures um, should completely uh, have a caption that allows you to understand the figure without having to read the text of the paper. And so uh, by just scanning, title, does that interest you? Yes, move on, abstract. Read that quickly, does that interest you? Yes, look at the figures. The figures and the tables will give you an idea of exactly what sort of research was done, and then a certain figure may catch your attention, read the caption, and that is how you kind of get a, a quick overview of what this paper uh, can offer your research or um, provide to your uh, document that you're writing. If something catches your attention when you have this first pass over this research paper, title, abstract, figures and tables, captions, you can go, oh, I wonder if in my other massive stack of uh, research papers that I need to read, I wonder if there's something similar in there. There is an awesome new, new tool called lateral.io. Lateral allows you to search amongst all of these research papers, not only with keywords, but contextualized kind of understanding. They've got an artificial intelligence that goes and scans all of these other papers. So you can kind of start to connect the dots. And then from there, if there are similar kind of uh, contextual understandings in these other papers, I would raise those to my top of my read list and then uh, start to collect those together. Now this tool, Lateral IO, they've reached out to me and this isn't a sponsored video, but they've given me access to uh, the beta uh, version and you can sign up using my link below. So go check it out in the description because you'll get free access and immediate access to the beta version. So go test it out. I'd be really interested to know how you use it and what you think about it. So lateral.io, I think that's gonna be a valuable tool for researchers who want to read review papers, journal articles, and other kind of texts quickly and effectively. The last and final step of reading a research paper effectively is actually just you know going through everything else. So once you've kind of collected this information, the process we've been through is essentially allowing all of the important papers to bubble up to the top. Once they're there, you've looked at their title, you've looked at their abstract, you looked at the figures and the captions. You also then use that information to go away and bubble up other interesting studies using lateral.io, but now, you've got this kind of collection of papers that are very important to you. And this is where you now need to sort of like understand the uh, paper in much more detail. And really there is no getting around simply reading the paper, um, but you don't read it from start to finish. You uh, can start with the conclusions, that's a very important part. So go to the conclusions and be like, okay, does this exactly match what I want it to say? Uh, is it super important to me? And then I'll look at the research uh, details, so the summary and the description and the discussion about what they've done. And then and the very last thing I read is the methods. If the methods um, are related to my research, then they become very important. But normally, I don't look at the methods until I've read everything else. And a research paper is presented, you know, as this kind of like structure. But as a scientist, as a researcher, you should not read it in that order because it's just gonna waste a load of your time, particularly because research papers are dense, they're thick, they're full of kind of field specific terminology that are confusing to almost everyone that's even a little bit outside of that field. So um, yes, read papers in this way. Use the tools that I've mentioned in this video to make it quicker and more efficient. And I feel like that is the best way to read research papers effectively.
In this video, I've just talked about all of the tools and tricks that you can use to read research papers quick and effectively. Let me know in the comments if you know of any other tools that can help people or any other tricks and tips that you've got for really kind of uh, speeding up the process, which can be incredibly long, incredibly boring. Um, and uh, it's all about getting through those things quickly, the research papers, read them effectively, let the interesting ones bubble up to the surface, and then those are the ones you should spend more time on. And uh, that is probably the most effective way to read. And then looking at the title, abstract, then the figures and tables, the captions, then the conclusions, then the discussion and results, and very last, the methods. That is how you read a research paper and save yourself a ton of time. If this video has been useful to you, please go check out academiainsider.com. There you'll find my ebook, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, where I go through everything you need to know about writing peer-reviewed papers effectively and quickly, and it's very much related to reading, so go check it out. And also you can join my forum, my community, where there's a bunch of really awesome academics helping each other get better, solve problems, because academia can be lonely and confusing, and that community is growing quickly. And Together we can help each other.